We were lucky enough to have Brian Garside from Manage Comics join us last time for LGSC. And there was a wealth of information that Brian had on digital marketing, which was unbelievable. I remember it was, it, I stopped and started taking notes. I was over here and I was like, I got to write this stuff down. You know, this is crazy, great stuff. But this time, uh, I think Brian is joining us to talk about something, as I just mentioned, so near and so dear to my heart. I am, I am a child. You know, I grew up in the 80s and 90s and loved comics. Um, and it's crazy right now. Like, um, just as a comic lover, all the movies and TV shows I dreamed about as a kid, they're out now and they are so successful. So it's pretty, pretty unbelievable. But here from uh, Manage Comics, we have Brian Garside. Welcome, Brian, to LGSC2. Because you you were at LGSC1 at LGSC2. How are you doing, Brian? Good. Thanks so much, Maji. This is awesome to be here. Is that a spider? Are you wearing a Spider-Man? Spider-Man. I'm, I'm double Spider-Man. I got a Spider-Man hoodie and a Spider-Man t-shirt on. Respect. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I am I'm a big <laughs> Spider-Man. Amazing Spider-Man was one of the early titles I collected. So I'm into it. Um, all right, Brian, are you ready to take us away? I am. Yeah. All right. I'm really let's excited do it. To, to talk today about managed comics and, and kind of the future of where we're going. All right. Take us away. Will do. All right. I am going to share my screen right now. So you should be seeing uh, power up your store with managed comics. Um, right about now i forgot to hit the button the magic button there we go um yeah so today i'm really excited to talk about managed comics i'm going to start out by talking a little bit about where we came from and what we're doing uh right now and then uh i'm going to get into the really really exciting stuff which is um the immediate future and managed comics 2.0 which is our future uh product we're releasing so let's talk real quick about um just what managed comics can do for you. So imagine if you had the power to determine guaranteed revenue three months into the future. Uh, if you could build an army of dedicated return customers who come in predictably, they call them Wednesday warriors for a reason. If you could thrive during shutdowns, lockdowns and slowdowns. Uh, and this is exactly what managed comics has, has enabled stores to do. Um, this is managed comics. So managed comics is subscription software uh, it has nearly 350,000 comics and comic related products in our databases. We add around 5,000 new products monthly. And when I tell um, people that, that at Shopify and companies like that, that, that we're dealing with 3,500 SKUs on average every month, they're like, what? So comics are high SKU. Um, there's a lot of stuff to keep track of. And that's exactly what our, uh, what our, our tool does. Um, so first of all, it gives customers control. So traditionally, comic customers have had to call their store or go into the store or maybe email if the store was really cutting edge and let the store owner know what they wanted every month. Um, this is actually a, uh, a website which works just as well on your phone or your tablet as it does on your, on your desktop. And it gives the customers a web portal to manage their subscriptions. They can add from over 1,400 recurring products. They get timely emails sent about upcoming new releases. Every month, I actually write an email that has all of the new stuff we've added to the database. And that email alone accounts for about 20% of new subscriptions every month. We have built-in email marketing tools for stores to inform customers about new releases. They also inform customers about exactly what has been pulled for them that week and what's sitting there waiting for them in store. We have powerful management tools for the back end for the store. The stores have the ability to set a final order cutoff date, meaning that they can say, we won't take orders for something after this day. A really great example of that was the Batman Fortnite comic that came out recently and just went crazy. And traditionally, Video game tie-ins of comics do not sell full stop, but the Fortnite comic went off the shelves because one, it was basically a $10 item that you were buying for $5 with the skins. Um, and it has lore that's written by Donald Muster, who's the co-creator of, of uh, Fortnite. And like that lore is, is kind of rare stuff. So um, the ability for people to say, I won't take any more orders on this after this, this particular time was really, really important. They have the approval of special order items, meaning that uh, somebody can order you know, a $300 statue and actually have to go through an approval process and not just boom, that, that's gonna get ordered for you without any uh, conversation. 
We have pre-authorized credit card uh, processing, meaning you can charge for items as soon as they come in and increase that, that cash flow. And we have back office tools that let you generate initial orders and final order cutoffs super, super easy and super fast. So that gives you a guaranteed number of sales based off of subscriptions. You know that this many people are going to come in every month and buy this stuff because they've requested it. Um, we're used by a lot of different stores. We're, we're currently uh, 86 stores throughout Canada, the United States, and Europe. We've been in business since 2015 when I first uh, started this, this company. Um, and we have redundant cloud infrastructure, high uptime and high availability. And I have to knock on wood because that's always, always jinxing whenever you say those words, but um, we, we really, really pride ourselves on, on our availability. Um, we go down a few times a year and they're usually so that we can do a major update and it's like minutes, not hours. We have over 12,000 customers who are currently subscribed to their comics through Managed Comics. We have 11 binder POS stores using Managed Comics. Um, and uh, yeah, we're, we're really proud of that relationship. So just a couple of the stores, um, a couple of the really great stores that, that we work with. Uh, BD Cosmos in Laval, Quebec. Uh, Julian there is an awesome guy. He is a binder POS store and he also has a Managed Comics store. Um, there's the comic shop in the UK, uh, which is Aaron's shop, Aaron Payne. Um, they're a great, great store. Uh, and they're also a binder pause store. Uh, and we have my own local comic store, uh, LA Mood, which is Gordon Carroll Mood store. And Gord was the guy who got me my first or hired me, I should say, uh, back in 1989 at my first comic store. So uh, I have a, a real great affinity for these guys. And, and like I said, they're my, my local store. They use managed comics and they use Binder POS. We do have a special deal for Binder POS stores. Um, so we work really closely with, uh, with the Binder POS team in the past. Um, we're, our tools work really well with Binder POS because we use Shopify as kind of our intermediary platform. And we do a special pricing for Binder POS customers. At the end of this, I'll tell you how you can get a hold of me. Something I'm super, super proud of is that we responded during the pandemic. We uh, got in front of our customers and said, how can we help you? Literally, I remember the day, it was March 7th. We still had an office back then. And I, uh, I got on onto the phone with a couple people and said, I'm going to put together a quick co course on how to like do a bunch of different internet things like co communication and uh, SEO and things like that. Um, we also adapted to help stores handle curbside pickup. We created Shopify tools that allowed products imports quickly. Um, we told customers how to get themselves online on Shopify really, really quickly. We created pre-authorized credit card approval so that they could have their customers leave credit cards and do true touchless interactions with them. We wrote a ton of blogs, did one-on-one -on -one calls about marketing. We did communications calls. Uh, and a lot more. Um, so one of the, the big things that I think is really, really cool, and, and we've seen probably a decade of, of growth and really adaptation in the last year. Um, so did you have an e-commerce store pre, pre-pandemic? 54% yes, no was 46. But what's even better is will you continue after the pandemic? About 25% of those folks are going to keep on going. Eight of them aren't quite sure. 13% uh, said no. And this was based on uh, some surveys that we did uh, with our own customers back in January, February of this year. We also built a database and this was huge. So last year, a large, large uh, thing happened in the comics industry. DC Comics left Diamond Comic Distributors who um, were basically the exclusive distributor for, I would say 99% of the comics industry. DC accounts for about 20 to 30% of the comics market. They left Diamond to go to two new companies called Universal and UCS, or sorry, UCS and Lunar. Um, when they did that, the data situation became kind of untenable. So we actually created our own data store where we could put all of the data in. Uh, Diamond is still distributing DC comics to the UK and we have some UK customers. So we had to do some massaging around that. 
during that time, we created nearly 350,000 comics and comic related products in that database. We had around 5,000 products monthly. That includes um, not just comics and, and kind of it like comic ancillary things like t-shirts and some games and some cards and, and stuff like that. Um, products all have high quality photos, descriptions, vendors, categories, and we fully tag them with Shopify for ease of filtering. So then we actually created an app so that we could test all this stuff on Shopify and make sure everything kind of tied together and we were able to get products up into Shopify super quick. So we can actually import a diamond, a lunar, a UCS, or coming soon, a penguin random house invoice and create all the products magically. So that takes me to the future. Where are we going? Well, Manage Comics 2.0 is the future of, uh, of comics um, for us. The industry has changed a ton in the last six years. Um, variant covers now account for more than half of store sales. Online sales are a major component. As you just saw, we went from you know less than, maybe a little bit more than half of the, the stores with uh, online, and now 75% of them have an online presence. And I want to get that to 100, by the way. That has been my goal um, since I started working with comic shops probably 10 years ago. Um, we don't currently have a connection to the sales, so we can't predict future sales and we can't generate um, things like sell sheets and we can't generate uh, kind of predictive what you should order in the future. So we wanted to fix all those things. So we've decided to create a full Shopify integration. Managed Comics 2.0 will be a Shopify app. Um, it's a, going to have a simple setup process which gets it fully integrated into your shop, allows you to select some colors and things like that so it looks like your store. Um, and it's actually that subscriptions link on the top there. Um, so they're all literally Shopify pages. You'll be able to choose your suppliers, your categories, and even your publishers. Um, I'm Canadian, so there's a lot of comic publishers that we actually can't get in Canada for various reasons. Likewise, there's a lot of categories and, and um, different suppliers that we can't use in Canada. So as the comics industry has really changed and gotten more complicated, we've created tools on the back end to allow us to kind of facilitate that complication. So as a store, you may get some of your product from Diamond, you may get some of it from Lunar, you may get some of it from Penguin Random House. And in fact, you may get your comics, your DC comics from Lunar. You may get your trade paperbacks from Penguin Random House because you get better deals on them. Um, your customers don't need to know that information. So we've created tools where they don't have to know who you're getting things from, but you have very, very simple uh, reports and things that you can run to find all that information. And everything is powered by that geek, fe geek, fe geek fetch database. That might be the worst name that I ever came up with and, and I blame it on the pandemic. The entire Managed Comics 2.0 is integrated into your store pages. So now every single page on your website becomes a subscription page potentially. So for example here, Action Comics 1030, cover A, Mikkel Janin, uh, who's also the artist of uh, the Batman Fortnite. Um, that has a link right there to subscribe to the series, which is gonna serve to promote the subscription services to new customers. It'll also encourage your old customers to, hey, this, this storyline in Action Comics looks interesting, boom, I'll subscribe to it. It's gonna prompt them to sign up for a subscription service if uh, they're not already a member. For variant covers, so five, six years ago, variant covers were a very rare thing. Um, DC would have them occasionally. Um, Image Comics specifically said, we will never have variant covers. Boom Studios was very proud of the fact that they didn't have variant covers. Boom just released a comic called Berserker, which I think had 24 variant covers. Marvel's Eternals comic last month had 32 variant covers. Um, DC every month now has an A and B cover. So we're making it very simple for customers to add the different covers. Um, and, and that's really, really important to some customers. There's probably about 20 to 30% of the customers who really, really care about variant covers, um, but they really are passionately caring about it. The rest of them, 
really just want to subscribe to the stuff that they're subscribed to. We have powerful administration tools. So this is actually a screen of our current um, admin tools for the uh, customer list that, that I'm looking at right now. It's really the heart of our subscriptions service and it's the pull system that tells you exactly what to reserve for each customer based on what you received that week. Customers can also manage their lists online and then you can manage them through our admin tools in the back end. We have really powerful order creation. So subscriber stock will be reserved. Order creation simplifies your checkout and customers can check out and select to pick up in store. So when the pulls process is complete, um, an order is created for every single one of your customers with their current pulls and um, exactly what they're gonna get. So, you know, Brian Garside would have Action Comics 1031, the cover A, pulled and maybe Batman, Superman 18 cover A by Ivan Rice. Um, so you'll actually see a list that tells you exactly who gets what. And then on top of that, you'll also um, get a, uh, your customers will get a, a, an email that'll say, this is what was pulled for you this week. And there'll be an order um, through Shopify that has all this information. A couple of the other things in that, in that uh, navigation there, um, publishers allow you to set which publishers you want to accept, uh, want to display on your store. Product types allows you to show different product types. So we have um, obviously comics and trade paperbacks and graphic novels, but we also have a lot of gaming product um, from the, the different gaming vendors that we deal with. Um, we have a lot of toys and action figures and comics. Um, the Diamond Catalog has about 3,000 new products every month. The Lunar Catalog has another 120 or so. Um, and then on top of that, we're going to have a Penguin Random House catalog that's fairly regular. We're also trying to get um, some data deals with companies like Hachette and Ingram, um, who also carry trade paperbacks and comic products. And, and that will just kind of increase our ability for stores to very simply order from a variety of, of different um, distributors. So at the end of the polls process, um, which is a really cool process, the polls process begins when you get your invoices and you actually upload your invoices into the system. Um, from there, our system knows exactly what you got in that week and we'll have records of what you had um, received previously. So let's say that you had a, um, some damages last week on one issue and you were only able to pull seven of them and you needed to pull 14. It'll know to pull the additional seven right there. Um, in addition to that, it so it reserves all the quantities uh, for your customers. Then it goes through and adds an image description and all metadata. It includes all your pricing, including your cost per item so that we actually have true uh, margins on everything. It includes a SKU, a barcode, inventory quantity, all that good stuff. And it actually uploads anything that you have reserved that, that you want to place available on your site um, up to your site uh, super, super quick. It usually, so we're doing 100 to 150 products and it'll take about a minute and a half to two minutes to create all those products through Shopify. Um, so yeah, that's, that's really cool because that is saving you hours and hours every month uh, when you do that. We have a full suite of reports uh, which make managing the comics easier. Uh, we have a weekly damages and shortages report. So this one's really, really important. Uh, when this report comes out, or when you create this report, I should say, um, you can kind of instantly get a hold of the various distributors and say, okay, you shorted me five things and six copies of this and these three copies were damaged. Um, with, with the newer, I, uh, actually I'll be specific with Lunar, that seems to happen a lot less. Um, Diamond has been getting better recently, but they still have kind of just random shortages come up in your, in your boxes. Um, we create initial order reports. So an initial re order report is, is, uh, this display here, which shows you exactly how many people are subscribed to titles and uh, how many you need um, to set aside. So once we're integrated with the Shopify um, kind of vendor tools, or sorry, the Shopify sales, we'll be able to say, um, 
Last month, you had one subscriber to Jupiter's Legacy. You sold six copies off the shelf. You sold um, two in week one. Actually, let's be honest. You sold four in week one. You sold one in week two. You sold one, zero in week three, zero in week four, and one in week five. Um, so we'll, we'll do kind of six week uh, check-ins because after six weeks, usually comics are kind of dead stock. At that point, they become kind of back issue stuff. And, and then they're in an entirely different report, which would be a back issue report. Um, so having that information really will help you to adjust your orders going forward, up or down. Uh, and then with our current database, uh, we're gonna be adding a lot of new features like group titles. So uh, a good example is there was a storyline called King in Black that was all about Venom recently in, uh, in Marvel's uh, Spider-Man titles. Uh, and that went over to about probably, I don't know, there was probably 30 or 40 comics total that, that it crossed over into between one shots and, and there was a main five issue miniseries. And then I think it was in the different comics as well. So our system will actually uh, intelligently say, okay, you're already subscribed to Amazing Spider-Man and you want King in Black. So we're gonna put you down for all these other series that kind of tie into it, but we're not gonna give you an extra copy of Amazing Spider-Man. Um, and then all of our reports are gonna to have to reflect that as well. So yeah, grouping of, of storylines is really a big thing. And, and it happens quite frequently that these companies do these kind of group crossover stories that, that touch a bunch of different things. Um, outstanding subscriptions report is a report that uh, lets you know you did your polls and you had X number of, of extra copies uh, that, or you were missing X number of copies. Um, and so, you know, these five people need Radiant Black because you only got um, four copies and you needed six. Well, my math's wrong. You got four copies and you needed nine. Um, so yeah, we'll have, we have uh, outstanding subscriptions report. We have a final order cutoff report, which tells you every week, this, this one sucks. On Sunday nights, you have to have your DC final orders done. And on Monday nights at midnight, you have to have your um, diamond final orders done. So just getting that information uh, can be a pain in the posterior, but uh, this, this report makes it really, really fast and allows you to download a file from Diamond and Lunar and then upload a file uh, from us that, that gives exactly what you need. Sales velocity reports, that's the whole thing that tells you I sold six copies the first week, et cetera, et cetera. And future order reports, um, we've got a ton of different reports that we wanna create in the future. And one of the cool things about managed comics is that we actually listen to our, our stores, the stores that, that, uh, that support us. Um, so we actually create a roadmap every year and use that roadmap um, to kind of dictate what we're going to develop that year. That roadmap is entirely dictated by a really fun um, survey we send out every year that has kind of ideas that we want to work on, um, kind of an open forum for people to say, we'd like to see these things. And then my favorite kind of mean thing, which is the forced ranking. Um, so we say, we'd like you to force rank which ones you want us to prioritize as the most important things. So yeah, uh, that is, uh, that kind of dictates what we're gonna do. Um, so when is Managed Comics 2.0 going to launch? So we are currently in final kind of bug stomp phase right now. Uh, we'll complete that by June 1st. And then we're going to beta test with six stores in June. Uh, yeah, in June, June's next month. Oh, I get so confused right now because every day feels like a Monday to me. Um, so we'll be beta testing this with six stores in June, 2021. We're gonna do active development during our beta. So anytime that somebody brings up a problem with managed comics, we will fix it immediately. Um, and there's a couple of features that we kind of have on the, the back burner now that we would like to try and incorporate during the beta. Um, but honestly, a couple of them, we need other people to test them to make sure that what we're doing makes sense. Uh, and we're gonna have like some fun, heat graphing and things so that we can actually see that customers are are doing things the way that we would hope they will. 
Um, and our formal launch right now is scheduled for July, 2021. I am not supposed to say a date, but uh, I'm really, really hoping we can get July 1st as our, as our launch date, because um, I think this is a, a bit of a game changer in the comics industry. Um, in July, Penguin Random House will be becoming one of the, will, the primary distributor of Marvel Comics. Marvel accounts for 40% of the entire direct market. Um, and DC accounted for 20 to 30. So that's about 70% of the direct market. Um, we want to have these tools in place by July because I think there's going to be a lot of stores who are currently using solutions like Comic Suite who have seen the writing on the wall of how Diamond adapted to Lunar in the past and kind of know what's going to happen with Marvel in the future. Um, so we want to be there as an alternative for them. And, uh, and not only an alternative, I think we're a better solution at this point. Uh, just with the integrations into Binder POS and uh, and Shopify. What do our customers say? Oh, well, I'm afraid that 87% of the customers who use Managed Comics um, really like what they're what they're doing. Um, overwhelmingly, customers really like being able to edit their own lists. But a lot of the customers said that they would like to be able to manage variant covers. Um, so that's something that we've addressed with Managed Comics 2.0. And I think uh, I think we're going to get that up into the 90s. Um, and my favorite question is to our retail uh, stores, we asked, would you ma refer Managed Comics to a fellow retailer? 92% of them said yes, only 8% of them said no. So that was, a, that was a real kind of vote of confidence. And I'm really, really happy. And Aaron Payne from the comic shop wrote us, honestly, like a very heartwarming uh, recommendation and, and sent it to me and, and asked me to pass it on to the team. He said that during the pandemic, the, the tools that we built really helped them survive um, when, when the UK was in a, a lockdown, which here in Canada, I, I understand that we've been in lockdown in Ontario um, since Christmas. So we're, we were off for one month and we're back on until it's looking like mid-June right now. Um, and I don't know how stores are surviving without having customers in their stores. Um, and, and tools like ours are definitely one of the ways that they're, they've been able to. Uh, Aaron said with GeekFetch, we're now able to add products and make them available for sale online so much faster than we could have done without you. And with Managed Comics being able to take pre-authorized payments, it's completely changed the way we handle our pull lists. So yeah, I uh, I really appreciate that uh, that vote of confidence from Aaron. He's uh, he's he's something special. I'll tell you that. Um, I would be happy to show you guys more. You can book a meeting with me at managedcomics.com/meeting. I will walk you through the current managed comics, and um, if you give me about a week, I'll walk you through 2.0. It's a little bit kind of ugly right now, but it's getting it's getting better literally every day. Um, and I'm pretty sure by this time next week, it's going to be in a really, really good place. Um, I will give you answers to your questions. You can learn about where we're going. And uh, I'll even show you um, some of our, our cool database stuff and our, our geek fetch things as well. So that is it. Um, I'm going to see if there are any questions. Um, we got we got a bunch of great questions. Oh, my here, goodness. Here, Brian. So, all right. Um, you mentioned reports during the presentation. We're going to jump around your presentation a bit because questions kind of came in, but I wanted you to get through everything before we, we cut you off. So um, for the reports, how far back, uh, Rob wants to know, how far back will this data go? Shopify has always been hesitant to give third-party access to historical data. So any idea with the uh, managed comics platform, how far back that the data reports will go? Yeah, um, so so a lot of the data we, we will actually have because we're actually passing the data over um, to Shopify. So a lot of like initial order stuff we'll have in our database already. Um, it's going to be the sales stuff that we'll get back. Uh, and from what I've seen from the things that we've done so far, we've been able to get sales data in terms of like, you know, when something sold and, and how long ago it sold. So I'm hoping the, the window we really need is a six week window. Um, for every issue that, that goes out. Uh, and then, I, you know, going back, so, so we will pull Shopify system, pull all that information into the, the managed comic system, which, so even though we are a Shopify app, our, 
our actual system is a like it's a Ruby on Rails application that runs separate to Shopify. So it's still out there in the cloud being maintained um, very, very distinct from, from Shopify. And, you know, if I were to project in the future, I imagine there's a point where we, we build uh, into integrations into other systems, not just Shopify. But for now, just because 67% of the customers that we surveyed were already on Shopify, that's where we're hitting first. So um, will the displays in, Jim asked, will the displays uh, in managed comics, will they have both A and B cover art when available? Will they, will they feature the variant covers? Yeah, absolutely. And what's super cool about the variant cover stuff is um, we, so like I, I mentioned that Geek Fetch database, um, we are constantly updating that database. And not only that, but we crowdsource it a little bit. So all the retail partners we have are able to um, add images. So if somebody out there, because you know, having a half dozen of us that are working behind the scenes looking for stuff is one thing, but having an army of 90 retailers who are constantly seeing stuff that I don't see every day um, is way more powerful. So they're able to update images and then we get kind of notification to let us know that something's been updated. We can review it and then we approve it. Um, so what we end up seeing is like, there's images I didn't even know existed out there that, that people are putting up that, uh, that we can approve and, and have uh, kind of updated covers because that stuff changes almost to the day it ships. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it is pretty overwhelming. Anyone who's unfamiliar with the comics industries, particularly now, it's just, even if you're plugged in, there's just so much happening. You cannot stay on top of it. So crowdsourcing, it has to be the answer. It's insane. Yeah. Yeah. There's, like I said, Eternals, 32 covers. Like that's. I didn't even know that. I, I knew there were variants. I didn't know it was 32. My gosh. It's insane. Um, <laughs> will uh, will Manage Comics 2.0 be available to stores outside the U.S.? Well, since you guys are in Canada, I, it's probably better put, you know, outside North America. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So yeah. we, um, so we're currently uh, available in the U.K. The U.K. is a little bit tough because um, Diamond so Diamond's just tough in general. Diamond actually has different um, codes that they use for the UK versus uh, the US and they won't provide us those codes. So we're getting them through sneaky means right now. Thanks, Aaron. <laughs> um, so we, we actually get those. Uh, and if, as long as the other places are using kind of the similar codes, we're, we're okay. Uh, Diamond is the only company that that's difficult with, by the way. It's a pain. Um, so the, here's a question. Does managed comics integration with binder POS allow transactions with cards and comics in the same cart, or is it switching between plugins? Uh, that's a good question. I, I don't know yet. <laughs> I'll have to go down to LA moods this week and, and find out. I'm pretty sure it should, but I, I don't know that for sure. Yeah, I, 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 we have that. That's just a totally honest answer. We don't know yet. So uh, stay tuned. You saw Brian's yeah. contact information, and I'm sure he will update everybody as soon as there's a, an answer to that one. Um, Dream Days asks, how does the system handle retailer to direct publishers like Bad Idea and Alterna? That's a great question. So we, um, we have a relationship with Bad Idea, um, and so we all the answers are lie in GeekFetch. We use GeekFetch as our kind of repository for everything. So we update um, GeekFetch with all the bad idea information. Um, I've been talking, what's his name? Peter at Alterna um, was providing me with data, but I kind of fell out of touch with him for a while. So um, I'll have to check in with him again, but we, we kind of warehouse all that data in our GeekFetch system. And then everything becomes available on your store uh, again, based on what you select. So by default, Bad Idea and Alterna won't be pre-selected um, because honestly, 90% of the stores, one, don't qualify for you know Bad Idea because they, they only have 300 stores using them. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, you know other stores just prefer to, to go through traditional distributors. So uh, yeah, there's the ability to add any of those other uh, distributors. So we have another question from... Rob here. So I'm assuming that the integration with Binder POS will pull customer names from Binder and determine whether or not they're a sub so you can build a sub versus shelf report. We lost this when we moved off of Comic Suite and cycle counts are 100% manual at the moment. Yeah, yeah, one, 100%. So yeah, we have the ability to pull in customers into uh, managed comics. I think 
we're kind of playing around with this because this is one of those things where once you start actually actively using the system and, and, you know, we, we wrote our specs based on one thing, but um, we were originally going to just use kind of binder POS or Shopify customers and have like a little connection to them. But we're starting to find out like if you're creating a customer from scratch, cause a guy comes in and says, I want to subscribe to these comics. It's actually probably easier to create them in managed comics and then push them to the other systems. Um, and then those other systems will become the, what's it called? The system of record, I think. Um, mm -hmm. we, we're just going to be the kind of conduit into it. So we'll dump that information over there and not care about it other than the, uh, the person's kind of identifying information. Awesome. So I make, I make no, uh, no secret of this. I would love it if, if Channel Fireball, if we could get into comic books, because I, I am a comic book guy. I've loved comics my whole life. So there are a ton of comic skews. Um, so for someone interested in expanding into comics, how do we know where to start and not just jump in with dead inventory? That is such a good question. So this is exactly where managed comics comes into to play. Because what I would recommend is start out really, really small by saying, we're going to be offering comics, you know, sign up for the stuff that you'd like to get. So now you've got a guaranteed pool of stores. And I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, there's a gentleman uh, named Joel who recently started a comic shop in Texas. And uh, he was a he was a retail banker and he was uh, sick of being a retail banker. He just had a kid and his wife has a really good job. So he's like, you know what, I'm going to open up a shop. So he opened up his shop um, virtually in the very beginning. And he did it by saying, I'm going to offer comic subscriptions who wants in. And within like a week, he had enough subscribers that he was able to make his minimums to, to Diamond and Lunar. So I think Diamond's minimum is $2,000 retail a month, which is, you know, at discounts, probably about a thousand um, actual net net cost. Um, so he was able to set that up. And within two months, he's, he's, he like doubled his, his uh, subscriber base every month uh, for the last three. So yeah, that's the kind of thing that you, you kind of sign up and get your minimums taken care of and then just grow and grow um, based on kind of pre pre subscribed uh, revenue, I guess is, is what you'd call it really more than anything. So kind of similarly, if I don't currently have any customers actively asking for comics, uh, is it still worth it to branch out into comics? Uh, if yes, what's the best way to connect with existing comic customers? So I would say, so first of all, I think you need to have some sort of a affinity for it. Um, if, you've, if you kind of get the industry in that you understand what comics are and, and you know, how, to, how to sell them. Um, and it's not too hard. You know, you can say there's all these comic things out there. Um, it should make sense to buy, you know, if there's a new uh, Loki series coming out, um, if I stock the shelves with a few Loki comics, that should get me kind of in the, in the door. Um, and then letting people know that you sell comics is, is the first gateway into getting people interested in buying comics for you. Um, so I think just a little bit of signage saying that we actually have some, um, we have like pre-created PDFs that you can download and, and cut up and like print out and cut up and say, you know, we have this subscription tool now, uh, try this out. Um, a lot of stores have found that really, really useful. Uh, and it actually has a link, not a link, but it has a printed like URL of, of how they get to the, um, the subscription tool there. So for, are there any features inside um, Manage or Manage 2.0 um, for customers to find recommendations based on their current subscription list? No, but I want to get there so badly. Like I, that is my goal is uh, <clears throat> you subscribe to this, you should subscribe to this. Um, right now, the one thing we do is we send out an email every month that says, this is all the new stuff that was released. Uh, I, I really want that to, to get to the point where we say, um, and, and I'll tell you, some of the stores are even more aggressive about it. Like, I just want to be able to say there's three new Batman titles out and you're subscribed to Batman. But some stores want to pre-subscribe people to things like um, there was a comic called Batman Three Jokers a couple of years ago. Anybody who was subscribed to Batman got that title. 
So they just want to kind of pre-subscribe people to stuff like that. So that's definitely um, a feature that we're, we're looking at for the future. Um, but yeah, I, I think uh, that's kind of the, the future of where everything needs to go. We, we need, comic stores need to become more concierge than, uh, than just pure vendor, like transactional vendors. And so by concierge, you mean, you know, being that resource to say, you know, hey, Mashi, I know you love Batman or, you know, I know you love Spider-Man. Why don't you check out blank? Just kind of like yeah, absolutely. have those yeah. offerings. Yeah. And, and like, you know, when you're talking, because comic stores and, and game stores are kind of clubhouses in a way, right? So you're talking to somebody, 100%. <laughs> you're talking to somebody and they say, oh man, I just watched WandaVision. Well, there's a, there's a Tim, Tom King Wanda, uh, sorry, Vision comic that you have to check out. And stores that were doing this were hand selling this thing so often that, that it sold out multiple times from the distributors. So um, a good example is Invincible. Uh, apparently Invincible has sold, oh, I want to say it was like 300,000 units in, uh, in the first three months of this year. And that, that it's a cartoon that's on Amazon Prime. Um, and it's a comic that has been done. I, like, I think the last issue shipped five, six years ago. Uh, there's 160 some odd issues or 140 some odd issues and it's selling like hotcakes. So kind of having that, that idea of, of what is currently in the zeitgeist, um, what's getting talked about and, uh, and, you know, well, while, while we have you here, then, do you, is there anything, you know, you mentioned, you mentioned Batman and, and Fortnite issue. Are there any things like that that are in the zeitgeist or other things that you think, hey, this, this could be something coming soon? I literally just wrote a blog post about this and I was, I haven't published it yet. So that would be, a, that would be a little bit of a spoiler. Um, so there's a Netflix series called Jupiter's, I think they call it Jupiter's Legacy. The original comic was Jupiter's Circle. That's mm -hmm. going to be huge. Um, Netflix is releasing Sweet Tooth, I think in June, uh, by Jeff Lemire, who's like kind of a local guy. He's he's very close to where I live here. Um, that's going to be massive. I think that will sell like hotcakes. Um, behind me, there's uh, statues of death and and dream from Sandman. Sandman's oh, coming out as a yes. Netflix series this year, um, be and great. that is gonna that will sell like like Sandman sells already to everybody. Mm -hmm. Sandman, I think, will, will be the big winner this year and will sell so many copies. It's a great story, too, by the way. I love yeah. Neil Gaiman and, and the Sandman, everything in Sandman. The Vertigo line when I was younger was just revolutionary and amazing. Right. And so I can't get enough of it. I know, speaking for myself, my wife picked up Paper Girls. And I think that might be a series coming out soon as well. I'm not sure if that's Netflix or Hulu, but that's another comic book series. Kind of a... Kind of, uh, Stranger, Stranger Things vibes out of that one. Yeah, I think that will do really, really well. And there, they, there was another one called Lumberjanes that I think has been in development for ages. And I, I'm pretty sure that I heard that is coming out soon. Um, that's that's kind of similar in, in the vein. But I think Paper Girls is by Brian K. Vaughn, who did Why the Last Man, which mm -hmm. is currently shooting yes. in Hamilton, just down the street from me. Um, and that'll be coming out in the next year. And that that is going to sell. So imagine this, Mashi, and this is a crazy idea for a story. What if there was a global pandemic that wiped out all of the men except one? Right? A, a global pandemic would never happen. Yeah. How could that be? How could that be? It's impossible. Yeah. So there's one man left alive. Um, yeah. And it's 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 a really cool story. I think that'll do really, really well. I feel like why the last man for, for those not in the know with comic books, it's your favorite comic book friends, favorite comic book. That, That's that, right. That, yeah. Cause like, you know what I mean? Like everybody who knows comics uh, on more than a tertiary level has heard of, or knows of why the last man. So definitely, definitely check that out. Um, is there any support through the managed comics portal for customers to browse issues that are not in inventory, things like trade backs that we could order on demand when a customer wants it? Yeah, that's a, that's a cool idea. So right now um, we're mostly focused on the future and not really stuff from the past, but that would be a good idea. And it's not too hard. Like most of these distributors provide us with, with tools that say kind of what is available in stock. So building a tool like that would be really cool because it's basically drop shipping 2.0. Absolutely. Um, yes. Yes. And, and really it's something we should do at some point. Um, we have so many plans for the future. Like I really, really want to get into back issues. Uh, we have 350,000 products in our database. I have a database 
of over a million back issues that I want to bust into and get into our, our system. Um, and then I would love to work with somebody on like real time pricing of back issues because what will happen is something gets hot that's on your website for $4 and is suddenly selling in, you know, San Francisco for $10 and all the mm. San Franciscans buy it <laughs> for $4 and have it shipped out to them. Um, but it would be really nice to be able to say, Hey, the reason this is starting to sell is because it's actually 10 bucks everywhere else and kind of help people realize, realize the gold that's in their stacks. There's so like, I worked for comic stores many times and our back issues would be like 40, 50,000 copies deep, right? Like we'd have 40, 50,000 comics in the back and then we'd have another 40, 50,000 in the basement. And in there is like hundreds and thousands of dollars worth of, of product that for some reason will get hot. Um, you know, the first appearance of Rocket Raccoon, which is in, I think Marvel team up or something crazy like that will get hot for six months and sell for $120. And six months later, we'll be a dollar book again. So yeah. getting that stuff at the time that it's it's uh, it's kind of hitting is really, really important. Yeah, I mean, I'm, and it's funny. I, I had a similar experience because my first job was uh, kind of working for store credit at a comic book store. And one of the things I had to do was sift different titles. And I think it was like, I want to say like Omega Men number three might be the first appearance of Lobo. Oh, yeah. That was one. Yeah, we had a bunch of those. And I think there's like a, a giant size Avengers annual number 10 or something is the first appearance of Rogue. And, right, and at yeah. the time that was getting hot. So there's all these, all, this is like a 13 year old Machi. Isn't that crazy that, that it's yeah, still it, 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 those, right? They stick in your head, right? It, it's funny that like some of them kind of fall out of my head. And like I used to be able to tell you the first appearance of every Spider Man villain. And it's like now. Mm, I think Amazing Spider-Man number four is first Doc Ock, but I'm not positive. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it, there's only so much room, right? We can only store so right. much in there. And you got to make room for the new characters. That's <laughs> and right. so the old yeah. characters kind of fall away. Um, okay, we have another question from Rob here. Will 2.0 have greater ability to subscribe customers to, mani uh, to manga as well as it does comics? Yeah, so that's one of the cool things is that our new, uh, our new system... Um, because it's actually pulling in the monthly data from every provider, uh, we're going to be able to offer more stuff than we've ever offered before. We really kept a tight kind of finite list because we were manually um, activating and deactivating titles. But now we've got like systems in place that say that if something, uh, if something hasn't been, isn't three months coming out in the next three months, or hasn't come out in the previous three months, uh, then it doesn't exist. Like it, it'll be deactivated. And then we're going to have override tools so that like Saga, which is a very popular comic, but hasn't had an issue for a year and a half. Um, we'll be able to say that's still an active series, even though there hasn't been an issue for a year and a half. Cause I know that there's going to be another issue at some point. So yeah, for sure. Um, manga is a, is a huge uh, feature of this. And there's, there's a lot of comic stores that just simply don't carry it for whatever reason. So they have the ability to turn it off very, very quickly. Nice. Uh, so we'll get you out of here uh, on a few um, other questions and just things that I think are super important. You mentioned your blog and I don't know if, did you, did you, I think I, I I've got, I've gone to this blog because when we first met, we had a meeting and you showed me the blog. I'm like, Oh my gosh, there's all kinds of crazy information for comic books, for marketing, for everything. So I think, I think it'd be great for everybody here to know where to find that blog, Brian. Yeah, for sure. So it's just, if you go to managedcomics.com and if you're a managed comics uh, store and you're already logged in, then you're going to have to go to info.managedcomics.com. But in the top uh, right-hand corner, there's a, there's a link to blog. Um, I was doing a thing called the Managed Comics Thought Stream, which was every Thursday at 3 p.m. I was doing a, like a, a live stream video. Uh, I'm going to get back to that. We, we had renovations going on in our house. And wouldn't you know it, every day they were renovating exactly when I was <laughs> trying to, to stream. So I kind of took it off uh, for about three weeks there. But I'm going to be coming back this Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Um, so, yeah, that'll, that'll be a regular thing again. Uh, yeah, so info.managedcomics.com if you're a subs you're a customer. Otherwise, you can just hit managedcomics.com and it'll it'll take you to the uh, the blog site. Awesome. One of the other things you mentioned was this yearly survey. 
you, you do. So is, is there, how do we get into that yearly survey? If we want to be part of that yearly survey, what's the, how do we get in there? Yeah, so I've been sending it out to our um, our stores every year. So if you're a store, you're going to get an invite to the yearly, yearly survey when we do it in January. Um, I'm probably going to do, so we've got, I think, about a thousand prospects in our database. I think I might do a survey of them uh, soon. Um, so if you're in our database in any way, so if you go to our website and, and uh, sign up for our guide or anything like that, you'll definitely get into the database and then uh, we'll be sending out emails uh to all those folks uh, very soon. Okay, so now, and now we're gonna veer into this realm uh, of uh, having you live, having you as a comic book fan, uh, a lifelong comic book fan, and asking you the questions that I wanna ask. So okay. what is the best Spider-Man film and why is it Enter the Multiverse? <laughs> that's actually, so that, that's my son's favorite Spider-Man movie. I, yeah, I, I think you're right. I think you're right. Um, you know, the most characters, it's probably the, the truest representation of Spider-Man and all the, the various Spider-Mans. It's the closest one too to the, the ultimate Spider-Man, which like, I love that series in 2000. Um, yeah, I think, I think you're right. It is. Plus the man, the style. We, hey, have you seen the new movie, um, the Millers versus the robots? I think that's what it's called on Netflix. So it's, it's, by I, Phil, I have not seen it. It's by Phil Lord and oh, the other guy, the guys that wrote, uh, into the spider verse. And it has a very similar like aesthetic to that movie. And I loved, I loved that movie. Yeah. Robert just says that's so good. It is. It was, it was really, really cool. Um, check that out. Millers versus the robots. Millers versus Netflix. the robots. Okay, so here and here's here's a very controversial one uh, in in my playground. So I, I as I said this earlier in LGS, I'm a child of the '80s and '90s. So, what and I won't pre-fill here. <clears throat> what is the best Batman film? Oh, so I you know I I have to say, The Dark Knight, but I kind of want to say Batman Begins because I love everything about Batman Begins. Yeah. I just recently, my son is 12 years old and we've recently gone through all of the original Batman movies. And I always thought that like Batman 89 and which is hilarious that they call it Batman 89 now. Um, yeah. And, uh, and Batman returns. I always thought those were the two best ones, but man, they don't hold up. They look like they were shot on sterile sound stages and that the, uh, the Nolan stuff, um, just looks so good because it was all shot in Chicago and looks so nice. And I actually, I was in Bruce Wayne's apartment in Chicago, which was, is in the D, is it the D or the W um, hotel? And it was like the, the penthouse suite mm -hmm. of the, the hotel. So cool. I was standing there and I'm like looking out a window and I, oh my God, this is Bruce Wayne's hotel room. It was so cool. Or apartment, I should say. I, I am, I'm a, I haven't seen it. So I haven't, I mean, I haven't seen it. I shouldn't have that. I haven't seen it in a while, but my heart says Batman Returns. I loved that movie when it I came out. I loved Batman I just, Returns I when it came out. Yeah. yeah. I mean, everything from Michelle Pfeiffer, Christopher Walken, Danny DeVito. I mean, it, it's, it's wonderful for, uh, for all of all the Zoomers out there. Go watch Batman Returns. I don't know. I'm hoping yeah, it holds yeah. up. So, um, okay. Given you've just given two Nolans as your top two, who's your favorite Batman? Who's my favorite Batman? Uh, you know, I'd probably say Keaton, um, but, but, but there's a special place in my heart for Adam West. Oh my God. <laughs> I, was, I was, I was actually going to start, I was going to start the uh, entire thing out like, welcome citizens. Why, why would you, why would you X that out at the last minute? That's how you had to start this. That's how you I know. Start. I know. I, yeah, I really screwed up. Maybe we on LGS Con 3. We'll I'll have that. What I, what I want is a red light up phone for, and just the, the focus shot on the phone, Brian. And then it rings and lights up and you pick it up. With, we'll pan back. You'll pick it up with the mask on. Commissioner? Yeah, that'll be, that would be just, just perfect. Um, okay. Well, we, we're up against it, Brian. Um, we put the info for your blog in the chat. Uh, I just want to make sure any, any other uh, thoughts or messages you want to send out before we sign off here? No, I mean, I'm really, really excited about 2.0. I think it's uh, it's going to be an amazing tool for stores and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me, Mashi. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk soon.
Yeah, I can't wait. This is uh, it's always it's always a joy for me to sit down because I, I in my in my current social orbit, as you can just tell from these last few questions, there aren't many comic fans. So this is my opportunity <laughs> right. to talk to Brian about comics and multimedia. Thank you so much for your time. Just a wealth of information. You want to check that stuff out. It's not just for comic books. There's tons of digital marketing, SEO information um, through Brian. So I, I implore you, anyone go check all that information out up next we have james white from legend story studios the uh, the the studio that is producing creating flesh and blood one of if not the hottest collectible card game on the market right now he's going to be live here with us james is answering your questions we just got we're just in the uh, in between times now we had the first edition monarch release we're waiting for the unlimited monarch release white hot flesh and blood so just Stay here. We'll be right back with James and bring all your questions. So thank you, Brian. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and have a good one. Thanks. Bye-bye.